And away we go. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's Friday. It's been two weeks since we got back to get since we got together. Sorry about that. There was a uh, a change in the way YouTube does things last Friday. Uh, Mike and Rick, and to a lesser extent, I were doing some stuff on YouTube on Friday morning. And we were done with it, and I was getting ready to set up my show for Friday afternoon. And his system was still locked on streaming, and they we shut everything down, turned every computer off, and then still it was locked in. Well, maybe that was the problem. Maybe it was the way that uh, YouTube had made some changes to their interface. So by the end of the day, uh, I had it working. In fact, I had it working. Uh, about 30 minutes before showtime. But unfortunately, about an hour before showtime, uh, I said, look, I don't think we're going to be able to resolve this. So I killed the show. So apologies. It was an interesting show. Uh, and I couldn't push it back to this week because as you may notice, this is not my studio. And uh, I am about 500 miles away from my studio. We did a road trip to uh, my son's for Thanksgiving. We're here for four days and bringing all the things that we need to do for this really fun and amazing project that I have in mind was impractical. I have never traveled personally with computer gear without breaking something. Take for instance, this little monster. It's just a wireless keyboard. I use it all the time on PCs and on Linux machines. And it started acting really flaky last night when I was doing some pre-testing and I thought it was the battery. So the missus and the son went out and did a little Black Friday shopping this morning and said, bring me back a battery. Got a, 90, a nice shiny new battery in it, and it is still doing horrible, terrible things. I can't figure out what it is. I may have to remove every key cover and clean out every key contact. I, I know that what it is, there is some key contact that uh, is stuck. All the keys themselves feel like they press up and down. I don't know. We'll troubleshoot that together, perhaps on Discord. But anyways, it is Friday. It's Friday, November 25th. It's the day after Thanksgiving in the U.S. And in the U.S. and in many parts of the world, this marks Black Friday, which is a really weird thing because Black Friday was a bad thing that happened in 1929. But everybody has morphed it into the biggest shopping day of the year. And oh, by the way, if I, I get this upward look, you should feel my neck. Oh, my God. Uh, Take a look at the picture that I posted on Discord, and you'll see why I'm doing that. Basically, there's a big screen TV here that I'm using as a monitor. Uh, my laptop monitor is down here because I don't have a real desk. I have something that comes up to about the height of my knees. <laughs> it's just no good. Yeah, that's right. I've switched to the Hawaiian alphabet with all 13 letters in there. It would be great. <laughs> I'll, I'll describe it on... Discord. So we're not doing a project today. That's the short answer. And uh, for that reason, short show. Let's uh, let's keep it to about an hour, give or take. If you guys got a bunch of questions, I, I can't imagine you do. Everybody, uh, nobody should be here. You should all be with family on Thanksgiving. But if you're here and you got questions, we're taking all comers. Uh, let me see. I guess a couple things I wanted to. to cover some ground so some of them just silly you know me but for fun so it is friday it's november 25th uh we got cyber monday coming up i'm at the kids school so we're at texas tech this weekend we had uh, thanksgiving dinner yesterday after a, about a 10 hour drive or so made some dinner and i uh, had that watched football all afternoon and evening after that so during that uh Slept in a little bit today, but this is the work day for me. I'm actually, I've been working since 7.01 a.m. my time. Uh, and I figure I burned those couple extra hours so that at the end of the show, I'm done. I didn't finish everything I wanted to finish, but I still got the rest of the weekend. Tomorrow, day together, just hanging. And then we've got uh, the last football game during my kids' tenure here. So we wanted to catch that one live. We like college ball. We really like. Uh, the the Texas Tech team, so we're going to catch that. Uh, got a great place in mind for dinner tomorrow after the game. 
and then uh, up early for breakfast on Sunday and then the long, lonely drive back to Houston. So it's going to be a little fun. Something I forgot to mention at our first show in November, uh, though I, I am following it, you'll see it's November and therefore it's no shave November. So uh, this week I started not shaving and, you know, look at this. I <laughs> can't wait to shave again and get clean faced. <laughs> You got a few more days, you got five more days of no shave November. Uh, if you haven't been following, you've been shaving every day, you're gonna look like crud in the next five days. But uh, hey, support the people that need the appropriate support for that. So I'm just, I'm considering this a little bit of stubble. Mm -hmm. What else? By the way, if you watched Mike's show on Wednesday, uh, and you got to see his uh, turbo encabulator presentation. It wasn't bad, um, but he, uh, if you didn't watch it, this won't matter to you. But if you did watch it, you might have gone <gasps> gasp when he finished up the show, the presentation, and he uh, sent me a text, edit that, will you? So uh, I, I set up the editor ready to go right after I got that message. It takes about 24 hours for YouTube to render one of these presentations. If I wanted to edit this uh, for some mistake that I made or something terrible that I said or whatever the case may be, it wouldn't happen until 24 hours from now that I would be able to. So same thing, uh, I had the computer up and running and waiting for the, the render to complete so I could get in and edit it. N never happened. Yesterday wasn't possible. We were on the road and doing family all day. So that was one of my first projects this morning to go in and uh, add a little bit of arpeggio over... Uh, one of the choice words that he added in there. <laughs> I didn't think it was that bad of a crisis. I, I usually make my own decisions about what I edit out of his and what I don't. And I let that one go, or I was letting it go, because he was having such a good time and it sort of fit the vibe. Uh, but then when he sent the message, okay, well, man's the boss, so I do what he says. Well, let's see. So yeah, we'll save again in December. This is drama. I am Dave Rush, and it's an Ask Me Anything, so D-R-A-M-A, -A, you get drama. We get together every Friday at 2 o'clock Central Time to talk about CompTIA certifications, industry news, Raspberry Pis, and ideally using Raspberry Pis in CompTIA certifications. Sometimes we do Raspberry Pi stuff just because it's useful, practical, or fun. Next week's show, I haven't decided if I can accomplish this all in one show or if I'm going to do it in two, but next week's show doesn't fit neatly into a CompTIA exam anywhere. It fits unneatly. So I'm doing it, but I would do it if, if I absolutely saw no fit. And I think, you know, if, if the powers that be were over me and they looked at that, and they, they would just fold arms and say, this has nothing to do with CompTIA. And I would say, that's okay. It's my show, and I mostly do CompTIA. So really, really fun show. I'll talk about it shortly. Coming up this Friday and possibly the following Friday. Reading my notes here. So what are we doing? And we do this. As, 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 uh, this is show number 118 or so. So no real good milestones for... Uh, a long time, right? So 200 will be the next real milestone, except for a, a three-year anniversary. So what do we got for that? Uh, 82 weeks, a year and a half before we can say 200. But I hope we're still doing it a year and a half from now, right? Whatever it may be. Uh, as far as questions go, don't limit yourself. To the things I've mentioned, it's a technology show, so we will talk I talk any topic that I know a little bit about or a lot about, and if I don't, then we'll uh, put it in advance and pick it up the following show. I'll do research, uh, but uh, it, it's a tech talk show. I really like talking tech with you guys. You, know, you have so many disparate opinions and things like that, uh, brilliance, and same thing for uh, communicating in, in many different ways on the unofficial Total Seminars Discord, Discord, easy for me to say, channel. In TD Washington, that was not a stutter. It was a mistake, it was a verbal bottle, bobble, see, bottle, <clears throat> but it's not a stutter. <laughs>
Uh, let's see, ask questions, usual, short show, I'm on the road in Lubbock. If you ever wanna, okay, so let's get some signs up and then we'll start looking at who's posting what. So it's an ask me anything. The easiest way to talk to me on the show when it's up and live and having fun is uh, use the YouTube chat channel. I'll read all the questions and answer everyone that I can or engage you in discussion if that's at all possible. If you're watching this not live or you can't, don't want to communicate via the chat channel, you can contact me at my company email address, DaveR at totalsim.com or my personal email address, DRushPX, Dave Rush in Texas at yahoo.com. If you catch me steaming, I'm Blood Rush TX. And yeah, please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's not mine and we don't monetize it. It just helps other people find Mike's content and my content. The unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. So there's a Discord server that was created not by anybody at Total, Dis uh, Total Seminars, Total Discord. <laughs> That's a, I like that phrase. That might be the name of my next project, Total Discord. But at any rate, uh, this was created originally to talk about Mike's topics and talk about Mike and talk about the show. And it has just exploded. I'm not going to detail it all for you. Uh, check it out. I'll put the link up for this on the YouTube chat in just a moment. But uh, you'll see some of us who are uh, who work at Total Seminars on there. We have green links, there's red links for people who subscribe, and there's white links, and there's zillions and zillions and zillions of sub forums. Just because you are kind enough to join Mike on his show and me on my show three times a week, we have a special for you. It is this week 50% off a bundle that you create. You start by going to totalsum.com. And you pick an area of study that you want to study for an exam. One of these seven areas, A plus, net plus, sec plus, and so forth. Again, I will put this up on the YouTube chat feed. And then you put two things in your basket. You put the ebook for that topic that you're interested in, and you and not the hardcover book. It's gonna only be the ebook. Hardcover book doesn't exist for some of these things yet, uh, like the new A plus, but the printers will someday get paper and start printing. And then also add to that the total tester for the same topic. And then when you check out, use the code this week, it'll change Sunday night, MOBY, M-O-B-Y, all lowercase. And that will get you 50% off of those two items in your basket. It's already cheap, so much the cheaper, right? All right. You didn't see any of that. I didn't share a single bit of it. That's right. I verbalized it, uh, and I'll put the signs up. Yeah, I'm all flustered since I'm in my kid's apartment. I have no idea. Uh, I see your question, T.D. Wash. I'm going to answer that as soon as I post this stuff. Let's see. Show notes. Here's where all the links for all the show stuff is. So the start with... There we go. The special. Here's the Discord invitation. It's a permalink. And again, that's good through this Sunday night. For those of you who wonder, I, I have a lot of fun every week picking the discount code. I try to make it short, easy to remember, topical. Something happened on this week in history, on a Monday, whatever it is, sometimes like a way back in the history into uh, pre-BC and sometimes much more current. This one's fairly current, 1981, uh, 1931. So that's where this thing comes from. A couple more things, my email address and my LinkedIn profile. And that's all the stuff I need to post for now. Here comes the email address. Both of them are on there. And if you're not following me or if you're not connected to me on LinkedIn, please do. I post all kinds of good stuff there. Usually uh, about once a week, I post what's coming up on the show. But I do articles and things of interest, and I just have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> I beg your pardon. All right. Let's keep this 
here. Okay, that's the next thing that gets copied and pasted. So we'll have it all highlighted and ready to go. All right, let's see who's here and what you have to say today so far. It's a nice uh, bit of turnout in the beginning. Blue Lantern was here first at 110 at <laughs> my time. So 50 minutes before showtime, I wasn't even looking at it till then. I usually set this up at about uh, 30 minutes before showtime. I mean, there's a preset up, but as far as getting really ready to press the big red button. Tullowit turns up as usual, half an hour before showtime. Andre de Goyer, good evening at that side of the pond. Very good. There's my welcome message. Got to change that for next week. I have a hub. Since there was no show last week, I didn't have to make any changes in all my notes and documents. That was kind of fun. Oh, you're so kind, Andre. Abu Bakr Al Haj is here. Nice to see you, my friend, as is TD Washington. Keyboard got changed to Hawaiian. Real zeal, real zeal. You've been having a, a good time posting on the Discord channel. I always see you uh, offering good thoughts. There's a lot of really useful and helpful people on Discord and even useful, helpful people, myself included, ask questions sometimes. Hey, help me with this. Uh, I think there are more things. Anybody who's following the, the saga of Zach's hard drives on Discord for the last about 24 hours, I don't think he's dead. However, it is so difficult to help troubleshoot the problem that he has with text that I am at the point where I'm, I'm thinking it's easier to blast it all away and rebuild. However, if you, you know, go read up on, see what's going on on there. My concern is when, if and when he blasts it all away, he will still have the same problem that he has now and not be able to get to the blasted away hard. In fact, he may not even be able to blast away the drives. So I think we need to get in with, with Zach on a, uh, a camera and voice session and get some information and walk talk through things. Calypso, a new voice and face in the crowd. Very nice to see you, my friend. Welcome. Techno Babble. Chris Kent's here. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Haven't seen you in a while. Crypto mining simulator is on sale. <laughs> okay, so I'll get ahead of myself. News and tricks and techniques of the week. Uh, I posted. I reposted a, a post from Reddit this morning to the Discord. I think it was to the general channel uh, that PC Build Simulator is on sale today uh, at Steam for five bucks. I, I don't have any feelings about it one way or the other. Uh, when it came out, uh, I found it to be utterly and totally useless and I've never looked into it again. Lots of people say it's better now. Um, I will bet money against that. I, I believe that it, it became a game where building PCs with click and drag and playing with artificial screwdrivers is a very, very, very small part of the game. The game, at least when I evaluated it, was how to run your own PC repair business. And it's all about ordering supplies and not overspending and you know fairly charging your customers and making a profit and being able to grow. And you know, somewhere along the way, a customer orders a custom PC. And so you have to get the components and put them together. But I, I you know, unless that's changed and, and it's all about building PCs, I think that's a very small part of it. And I, I don't see that would not have great value in what we do as we pursue CompTIA certifications. However, if I'm wrong, if it's changed and it's put more focus on buildings and you know making mistakes and troubleshooting, I think that'd be awesome. Are they doing vouchers again? Well, I'm not sure who you mean they uh, by they. We are not giving away vouchers. The nice folks at CompTIA put the kibosh on that. They said, uh, I, I think it, at the risk of perhaps letting the cat out of the bag, giving away vouchers was kind of like uh, giving away cigarettes. They get you hooked and then you buy more. And I don't think they saw enough of that return. I could be totally off on that. But what was really surprising is when we got the bill call on it, it was like right now, it was practically halfway through a show. Don't give away! So no, no vouchers. They are dead, as Hollywood says. Free ones are. Yeah, you can always buy them. And of course, Total Sim has discount vouchers. And we have both domestic and 
a large source of international vouchers now. <laughs> Only you can make that smiley face do. <laughs> no, not hotel. Uh, kids college apartment. So it's not a dorm, it's an apartment that's off campus. He shares it with, uh, there's three rooms here, but one of the, uh, the, the three occupants bailed out before the show started. So it's a, a big apartment for two guys here. And uh, the, the roommate hasn't been here for yesterday or today, and we're expecting him tomorrow, but it's been really nice. We're able to sort of spread out our travel gear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Hollywood has the ability to change the color of your moniker on uh, Hollywood and any other mods. Hollywood's one of the mods. Andre is one of the mods. I'm not sure else. I haven't seen any of the other mods here. But he can change your color. Might even do it on request. But if you've got the black tag monitor, that means you are something special. Zach, you're here. I was talking about your problem. Uh, and I'll come back to that. Kitty Washington, do you have thoughts on 5G internet service? I'm trying out Verizon 10 times faster than what I'm getting on Infinity. Well, there's your answer then. Um, yes, I have thoughts on 5G uh, internet phone service anyways, and, and I certainly on occasion use Uncle Phone as a, a hotspot, and I get great download on it. It's not faster than my Xfinity, but uh, I get 70 megabits per second down uh, when I have good, strong signal. So uh, I like it. Uh, as far as their 5G, you know, wireless access point, I haven't played with that, but it's the same circuitry and, and systems in the phone. So I have no reason to believe that that wouldn't be a good thing. It's all about dollars per megabit per month, right? All right, coming up on 213 post. That's when I started posting all my happy junk. And Patricia Grace, TD is okay. Questioning for Patricia Grace. Oh, well, sorry, Chris. Uh, Patricia Grace for home, okay. So Zach, what I was talking about, I'll be brief here. Uh, I don't think you're dead in the water with your hard drive problem. I think it's solvable. However, I think it is so difficult to solve textually that if that's our only option, it's probably going to be easier to blast away and start from scratch. If that's possible, I'm not sure that you will be able to blast away your drive. You said every utility that you've talked about, well, some of them detect and some of them don't, and certainly some of them don't have drive letters and you're talking about formatting. Um, what I would do if I were you is, you know, let's get on you, me, and, and some of the other experienced folks who are in this and not try to do it textually, let's do cameras and voice and, and really do some real troubleshooting on here. Or if that's not possible, not practical, go for the blast and start over. You kind of seem to have accepted it in your heart that that may be the end game. So maybe that's the right thing to do. I, I just don't know. But I, I don't think you're dead. I, I, would, I would love to have your system in front of me and slug it out. And, and I envision, you know, one, two, three days worth of slugging before we either succeed or we get to the point where you are and say, you know, I give up, let's just crash it. <laughs> Blue Lantern, I missed the first 20 minutes looking for a good Black Friday laptop deal. Best one, eight, the best one, the single best Black Friday laptop deal is an $1,800 Alienware with Ryzen. Gotta look, and I have no problem with that machine. Knock yourself out. That's probably if that is the best deal, that's a function of your compromises, right? Of what you want. Uh, I will never, ever, ever again have an AMD processor in a personal system for mine. Uh, they gave me this computer from the office to do some project with. And it works fine for almost everything. And then there came this one project that having an AMD in there was a nightmare, was a nightmare. It took almost a week to get this project working to some degree. It's still not right, but it's right enough that I was able to get through. So, you know, for me, that is not the best Black Friday deal in existence. For everybody else, 
you know, to each their own, right? But in my list of compromises, it's going to be an Intel chip. Lou Lantern and Lenovo jacking up their prices and calling them Black Friday deals. That's unfortunate. You can go to Discord and show you if you like. Yeah, yeah, well, well, we need to do that. Remote login episode on Zach's computer next week. <laughs> so you wipe the drive. I saw that so you can put Windows back on it and feeling gutted uh, when it's your own tech. You're right. And, and I saw that you, uh, the one that you gutted wasn't the one you, that you thought it should be. If I read that right quickly, I'm sorry. I I, I know you asked me to uh, connect with you. I'm I'm here on the road with family, and I have been doing very little this morning. I since I had to actually work today, I did poke in and over on uh, Discord, but I had real work to do, and I didn't have time to to get in there. After the show today, uh, I'm off for the rest of the weekend, and we'll see where that goes. Blue Lantern, I'm open to suggestions for Black Friday. I'm glad you said about AMD. That's just me, right? Some people love AMD. Some people just absolutely love them uh, to the same amount that I love Intel over AMD. So just not my cup of mud. Can't find much in Win 10 machines. That's right. Win 10 is, how's that? How do we go with that? Microsoft still sells Win 10. All the vendors uh, want Win 11 on their machines because they think that's what they want. But I saw an installed base report within the last week, and it is nowhere near the adoption rates of Win 7 and Win 10. So it, it doesn't get a lot of love. It's not a bad OS. I've played with it a lot in the last two months. But frankly, 95% of it is just Win 10 reimagined. Let's put this menu over in there. Let's change the look of this menu. But it's Win 10. It's Win 10. Trisha has changed her name again back to the Minusi. OK. Grace Minusi will do you all. Uh, you can run several devices with home service, no stutters. I'm asking because we're looking for a reason to drop cable service internet. OK. Yeah, it's good and pricey. Win 11 forces things like Microsoft account. Yeah, ish. So I had to do for one of the, the things with this AMD machine a Win 10 install. Now, because I'm videoing it on the machine, I can't run software that shows me how to do an install. So I did a, a Win 11 install in a virtual machine. And I did a screen cap on that process. Nice. I don't have, I am completely against Microsoft forcing us to have a Microsoft account. However, I, I know that there are ways, at least right now, to get around that. I can't tell you how much of a hassle that made shooting this thing. Oh my gosh, because I have to make it look smooth and look like you go from this menu to this menu to this menu. But it is doable. What you have to do is when you get to a certain point in the install, you press that pen, that gets you to a command prompt, and then you run the registry editor, make a change to the registry, close out, and then you have to restart from that place that you stopped from but then you can get past the part where it forces you to use uh, an account. You got that thing, uh, that old menu listing that says, I don't have an account, continue anyways. So it is doable. I have done that in my Win 10, Win 11 virtual machine on my Linux daily driver. And I have a new computer that I picked up that's going to be a Win 11 machine for. Uh, DJing, and I'm satisfied that Win 11 will do that. So I will do that there as well. Sooner or later, I'm sure they're aware of this workaround, and they will kill the ability to do that. But at least for now, while it's there, you can do it. That's OK, Patricia. We, we know you as both. It's all good. <laughs> I, I know it wasn't a name change. It was an account change. It's all good. Patricia Gray is your preferred grace. So we will do Patricia. Special guest attendee in the background. Right. So it's not a big apartment, 
It's got a couch. It's got a sofa and a couple of bedrooms. The kid is in one of the bedrooms taking a snooze before we do our evening activities. And that leaves the living room for me and the missus. So yes, she is back there somewhere. I can't, my machine is, my screen is so crowded. I have no idea what's turning up on screen. Lou Leonard, if I'm going to be learning Azure, does it make a difference when dealing with Intel or AMD? No, no, it's a cloud thing. Uh, that's software, the software runs just fine on either, so no problem. <laughs> I'm sorry, I told it. You, you have me stumped. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go back to it before I get to that fellow with line here. Blue Lantern. Luckily, I do have a Microsoft account, but I still hate it out of the box experience. Right. So that's what we do. We kill the out of box experience or, or reset it uh, with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's, it's not, an, it's a registry entry, but it's done with the OOBE utility. PG is an OG. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck with. The, the two common meanings for PG and OG for original. So I, I don't have it. I, I'm just not able to interpret that one. Zach says, I made a fresh install of Win 10 today. There's a way, there is a way to not use Microsoft account. I just elected to have no internet when it tries. Okay, that worked on Win 10. It does not work on Win 11. Win 11 says, you don't have an internet account or a, an internet connection. Let's get that started. So that's what you've got to work your way around. Oh, okay. PG for Patricia Grace. Huh? Ah. Yeah, you can do that with 10. You cannot do that with 11 without doing the, the out-of-box experience workaround. Okay, TD says she has successfully connected her phone, tablet, printer, and TV. Streaming is excellent. Verizon is about 40% cheaper than a fixing it. Expickany. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking to you, TD Washington. I, I sound like <laughs> what you accused me of or diagnosed me of. I'm not. TD Wash. Okay. So you guys are having your own conversation. I'm going to bail out of that one. Blue Lantern sounds like maybe I don't need a good computer. No, you don't. You don't need a good computer to learn Azure. It's just the internet connection that matters and everything else is dependent on cloud options. Yeah, that's mostly accurate. It's all good. All right, well, that gets me caught up on the chat channel. Let's see what's in my notes. Where are we at on time here? It's 32, we're halfway through. Again, short show today because I'm on the road. I didn't bring a project with me. Uh, oh man, I have an amazingly fun, simple project and I kind of put it in my back pocket. A couple of really cool new commands that I've run across that I'm gonna do a nice show about. Uh, we will be doing a contest today. We'll be doing a giveaway for Total Sim or tell you what, uh, yeah, Total Tester or I'm going to give you the option today, Total Sims. If you win, you've got to get me the info today before end of business today because I got to have that uh, turned into the fulfillment people before tomorrow morning, the way the game works. Uh, Joey Quetzal, I don't see you on here, but uh, if you are by chance lurking, you have not yet sent me an email for your winnings. If you don't get that to me by the, by tonight, you drop off and you got to win another contest. We are only holding them for the week that they occur. And then, because I can't keep going back and tracking who didn't get it and who did. It's, it's way too much on my workload, which is already far too high. All right, so we did discounts. Today's discount is Boris. Let me repost. This will be the last time the uh, useful and fun information since we've got some new people that have turned up here. So first and foremost, today's discount, this week's discount for the ebook and total tester bundle. And the Discord invitation. I don't have the Pi R Square server up and running. However, I guess I'll mention it. When I get back, I'll do it. I've got a total Discord server, a uh, and a Pi R Square server that has all the notes from all the documents and shows and outlines and pictures and PDF that I make and use for the show. I clean them up a little bit for you. 
And uh, I run my server usually a Friday morning, it sits on top of my desk, uh, early Friday morning to late Sunday night. So it's available all that time. And then any other time uh, that you want it, just kick me off a note on Discord or send me an email and say, hey, here's when I need it up and running or I need it up and running now. If I'm online, I'll do that uh, and get that for you. Somebody did that last week. They took advantage of that service. So that was very nice. Uh, okay, what's that? We got the Discord up. We got the Pi R Square server. I'll repost the LinkedIn and my emails, and then we're done with reposting all that good stuff. And Mike doesn't know this, but I have an unofficial contest with him. My contest is how many new people we can get to sign up for the Discord channel. Again, it's not our Discord channel. We're just participants with it, but uh, we do like that to help the cause. There's a lot of great people on there, and we want to help them grow it. All right, that takes care of that. You can save that too. So I was reading notes here. Uh, da, 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 no project today, so nothing to add there. Where we've been last week's show got bagged because of the techno glitch. This week we're doing uh, open Q and A. No project. Got a good project for next week that may extend into two weeks. And if there was a tutorial for that, I would post it for you. But let me tell you about that just for a second. I found this thing and I found it a long time ago and I was under the impression a long time ago that it wouldn't work on Rad Pi. It may or may not have, I may have been wrong, but uh, <laughs> nice to it. A couple of weeks ago, I, I was going down the rabbit hole doing some kind of research not on this particular project. And there was somebody who posted it as an aside, hey, I'm running this software on a Raspberry Pi. My world stopped. Whatever rabbit hole I was going down, that's something I wanted to do. So I went down that rabbit hole and uh, I spent three days getting it to work. It's very easy, but there's no good documentation. It's horrible. So it, it took me forever to get it to work and then because it was all, I got to figure this out, I got to do this. Then I had to undo it all and redo it and document it so I could turn it into a show. But uh, I will talk about that here before the end of day. Interesting news, tricks and techniques of the week. Not here in front of me, I didn't bring anything with me, but uh, I bought a new five port managed POE switch at a flea market for five bucks. And then I had to spend 25 bucks for the power supply. So we're gonna do, uh, oh, then I, I ordered a, a, a POE hat for the Raspberry Pi 4. So we're gonna turn that into three episodes. First of all, we're gonna talk about POE technology, and then we're gonna do POE, and then we're gonna use POE to do the astrophotography show. It's gonna be a, a lot of fun. POE is absolutely, uh, important to know in A plus and network plus. So that's why I'm going to stretch that into two days. And there's so much more about it. Uh, I, I, I never did any research on it. I was never assigned that as part of the book. Uh, and every POE device that we ever had was there, you plug in the power injector, now you plug in this, and it happens. But when I started digging this, oh my gosh, it's a miracle that we didn't destroy anything because the world of POE has changed a lot in the last couple of years. So that's, I think it's really, really important for us to be aware of those things. So I'm gonna do it. Okay, z -z 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 -z. got the POE hat, I've got this new computer. It's another NUC 10th generation and in Intel NUC, the next unit of computing. Uh, I guess I'll share the quick news on that. I've been working with this guy to buy this for a long time. He wanted to try and sell it for a lot of money and more power to him. But uh, he never did. And, and I made him a lowball offer and I had purchased one from him before. And so he wrote me back one day and said, OK, I'll take your lowball. Thank you. Uh, because we're using it for the, the show and for students and our STEM courses and whatever. So he was a very nice guy and gave it to me for a very nice price. I was expecting for it to come totally bare bones. So after I, I sent him the money, I started the big search for what kind of storage device I was going to put in there. It holds either. Uh, or both, an M2 NVMe 
or a traditional two and a half inch SATA device. So I, I was on the hunt for those, what I was gonna put in there and it'll hold up to 64 gigs of RAM. So I didn't wanna, I've got a system with 64 gigs and this system isn't gonna be a power system. So I just thought, well, I'll get 32 gigs of RAM and I'll start by uh, picking up a 16 gig SODIMM. That'll be enough to get me started. And then later I'll get another 16 gigs. Well, in it comes, I pop the top to see what I need to know. And lo and behold, there's a pair of 16 gig SODIMMs in there ready to go. It's got 32 gigs of RAM and a half a terabyte NVMe M2. So I plugged it in, turned it on, and it booted up an ancient version of Ubuntu. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the code name on it. Oh, Bionic Beaver. Uh, that came out in 2016. But that was enough that I could do some system testing on it, do some uh, confirm the RAM testing on the side of the hard drive and a couple other goodies. So it's ready to go. All I got to do is install Win 11 on it, and uh, I've got my new machine. I got a KVM couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to show it to you before I started using it, uh, because it's a lot easier than, you know, unplugging everything. I'm not a big fan of KVMs, but for a particular configuration that I have, I've got a pair of Ubuntu machines that I switch my Wi-Fi keyboard and mouse dongle into, and I switch my HDMI connector into, yuck, what a pain. So I got a KVM switch and it's really cool. What I want you to know about KVMs that's new and magical is the KVMs, they connect to their computer with a USB connector and with an HDMI connector or a, a display port or whatever the case may be. So I got two computers, they each have a USB cable going into the back of the KVM and they each have a, uh, an HDMI cable. And then out of the front of the KVM, I've got a cable going to the monitor. Now I've got four USB ports on this KVM. One is ostensibly for a keyboard and one is for a mouse. Well, I plugged in my wireless dongle into one of them and both the keyboard and mouse work. So cool, that means I got three ports left to do anything with. And what's really cool about that, I, I got stuck a camera in one and something else in it and still have one left. Uh, is when I switch, it's basically a USB hub. So whatever I have plugged into the KVM becomes a USB device on the computer that I've switched to. That's magic. And so I didn't keep it out. Well, you know, I could have kept it out of the case and put it on the side of my desk and showed it to you. But I had a need last, I don't know, Wednesday to use both of those systems back and forth all day and so I said, well, I got to hook it all up. So all you get from me is a verbal description. I may disassemble it and show it to you or, or take a portable camera and show it to you. It's such a mess up there. Uh, I'm, I'm embarrassed to do that, but so we shall see. It's cool. I have a notice here that Raspberry Pi organization posted. Let me, do I, can, I don't know if I can fit that whole thing here. All right, I'm gonna post this as two posts on the YouTube chat feed and then I'll describe it. Control C, post this. No, I don't need to do that. So Raspberry, Cornell University, has a digital systems design course that they have opened to the public for free. And they're using a Raspberry Pi Pico, a Raspberry Pi 2040 to do that. And you can follow along and, and learn and you know you don't have to do the project, but you can. And so if you're interested uh, in electronics, this may be uh, a little in depth. I don't know, I haven't looked at it yet, but I am just excited about the prospect and I wanted to share that with you. So. Go to take a class at Cornell University in electronics design using a Raspberry Pi Pico. Sounds very fun and very interesting. 44. All right, let us, let me check questions here and then we'll do our giveaway contest and we'll close out with any final questions and then shut this puppy down. <clears throat> hey, always a pleasure, Lou.
So this is a, I see a head behind you. Yes, it's the missus's head. <laughs> She's usually in the desk over off to my left. <laughs> Pulling the strings, she's shooting me with <laughs> whatever sharp implement she has. Joe Ram has joined. That's right. Joe Ram is now a member of the unofficial Total Seminars Discord server, UTSD. Uh, he's a digital dragon, triple seven, something like that. You think it's Black Friday? Michael is selling me the PC he just made for thirty-two bucks. I think you're you're offering to overpay. I, I wouldn't give him more than ten or twelve. <laughs> Blue Lantern. Anytime I've been interviewed for it, one of the first things they ask is if I built a computer. That's right. If, you, if you're looking to do uh, PC tech support, having built a computer is a, a really really valuable skill. And I'm building it and doing it again and building two and three is that much better. Correction on losing infinity email after canceling server and keep email. Okay. Never used Xfinity. Yeah, I don't use, uh, I have X Xfinity also. I have never used the email. I just use all my other ones, my Proton Mail and my Yahoo Mail and my company mail and uh, others. One from the side hustle. Digital Serpent 77. There you go. All right. Well, let's do a, an El Contesto. Uh, we're going to do a, a multiple choice question for free access, 90 day free access to your choice of either Total Tester, that's our practice test product, or Total Sims, that's our simulation product. You know, we don't have Total Sims for everything out there, so you have to go uh, check totalsim.com to see what we have if you're interested in either, uh, but you can have one or the other for 90 days, just pick one from that list, and then I'm going to show you... Uh, how to send me an appropriate email to claim your winnings if you are the winner today. Today's question, I don't remember where it comes from. We'll get there. It's going to be a multiple choice question. I'm going to read you the question. I'm going to put four answer choices up on the share screen. And you're going to pick one of those and type in the answer. Type in the whole answer and type it right. There's simple little words that you cannot misspell. You look at it, you type it, you get it right or you don't. You get to submit one entry. So if you submit one and, oh, rats, I, I think I, I got it wrong. I'll just retype another one. Nope, you only get one shot because they're all simple. Anybody could just do all four. You only get one entry per line, by the way. Uh, then I will pick the winner out of that. I don't pick the, the first person. I don't necessarily pick the first person who's right because if they won last week or they won 10 times this year, I want to go to somebody who's right and hasn't won so frequently or hopefully uh, has never won in the past. And I do my best to get those right. So that's the nature of the game. So it's multiple guests. Where are we doing this from? I think this is from Core 2, 220-1102. I didn't write the question number down, but I've got some funky notes for that. So. Ready? I'm going to go to screen share and I'm going to set this up so you can see the question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Put that over there. There's the question. Now we get the sharer ready. Share screen. Hey, you know, I didn't warn you in advance. Different mic, of course, and everything here. When I was doing mic testing, it was really loud to my ears. So I hope I didn't blow your ears off, but better too loud than too quiet because you can always turn your system down, right? All right, share screen, click this. Now pick a screen to share this one. <clears throat> All right, ready? I'm going to put the question up. Here it comes. It's a multiple choice question. You're going to choose one answer. It is from 2201102. Type in the correct answer. One time, one submission, one answer. And the question is, as you can see, a user received an, an email containing a coworker's birth date, birth data and social security number. Boy, that is just right with uh, bad grammar. The email was not requested and it has not been encrypted when sent. What policy does the information in the email violate? We give you four choices, here we go. UELA, DRM, 
IRP PII. I'll give you the question again, and I'll put those up and I'll leave them up there. A user receives an email containing a coworker's birth data and social security number. The email was not requested and it has not been encrypted when sent. What policy does the information in the email violate? You're picked between UELA, DRM, IRP, PII. That's not P2, it's PII. <laughs> All right, checking the YouTube chat feed. Four answers. Thank you, Blue Lantern. You've won, but it's been a while. No, you won recently. Hmm. I don't know about that one. I'm going to check here. I don't recall you on my winner list, but the, the list is very long these days. And so it's hard to keep track. Stand by, just looking stuff up. All right, I have a winner, I think, searching. It's not coming up with anything. I'm going to take it on faith. The program is being very slow, and I don't know why. There we go. Fine. Fine. Next. Okay. There is no match here. I have a winner who I do not have in my ever won anything list. The winner is Real Zeal 22. Congratulations. I'm going to show you uh, what to do to win, and then we're going to talk about the answer and share that with everybody. Okay. Stand by. Filling in stuff. <clears throat> yeah, that document is complete. Control V, save it with Control S. We're done with that. Uh, winner, real zeal. I said that. Now let's go and put the answer up. So PII, personally identifiable information. It refers to any data that can lead back to a specific individual. And I did put the wrong answers up and talk about them. DRM, digital rights management, technology used to restrict copyright or proprietary hardware. The EULA, end user license agreement, we all know that. That's what we agreed to in order to use software. And that is everything from, I wanna run this app to I wanna install Windows. And IRP is an in, uh, incident response plan that gives instructions that are followed if there's a data or security breach an incident. So cool. Real deal. In order to collect your winnings, let me do two things. Did I put that up there already? No, I didn't. What a fool. Copy that and put it on here and add Real Zeal's name to it. Love that name, by the way, obviously. At Real Zeal. Okay, real zeal. I have posted what you need to do in the YouTube chat. Do copy and paste that before you send me it so you can follow the instructions to the letter, if you please. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to send an email to me at my company address, davr at totalsem.com. Identify yourself with the YouTube name that you use in today's winning. And in the body of the meal of the email, you must put four fields. I know they exist in other places in the email. It doesn't work for me. I got to give them a document with four fields in it, and they're not going to get your email header. So give me your YouTube name, Real Zeal 22, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, your real name, first name, and surname. The email address that you want us to send your winning information to, and which practice test or total sim simulator, total sim simulator that you would like. And I need to know that by exam number, please. So 220. 110X or N10008 or SY0601, whatever it is. And I will get you what you need in the following week. So congratulations again, a real zeal. Uh, Patricia Grace, you won, but you won recently. That's why I dumped that. <laughs> Message retracted, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much right. Uh, Tallowit, 
we violated the anti-stalker policy. Wait, I meant thermal based. <laughs> that, that is your stock answer. Whoever kept answering 443, they seemed to, well, that was Andre. That you, you've moved and changed gears. I was playing with my new ubiquity. What was the question? It was one where the answer was 443, but you, you missed it. Too bad, too late. All right, Patricia Grace is out. Happy Thanksgiving and happy bonfire. Don't burn anything down. I think your ground is too wet to have a bonfire there after all your hurricanes. <laughs> nice, Patricia. All right, 443 was the, oh, it was all the way back in the day. Okay, so you can find that. All right, so where are we at here? Uh, we got about five minutes left. That's perfect. Let me get rid of this. There's nothing else on this document that I need to share. Nothing on those. We're looking good. Can you still see me? I got a, a hiccup going on here where I cannot see myself. Well, I'll just hit this. That's not going to hurt anything. I hope. Nah, as long as I don't hit the end stream, that'll work. All right, let me see if there's anything else left in my notes. If you got any other final questions or anything to post, now is the time. <clears throat> that sounded like a Daisy toy. Sorry, I got people making noise here in the apartment. Okay, so let's talk uh, for a second about next week's project. Uh, it's called Mix, M-I-X-X-X. -X -X. It is software that you can use to control a DJ mixer, to control audio editing software. Uh, it's a great audio mixer for a DJ. If you don't have a controller, it's really, really, really stunningly cool. Let me say, uh, sh uh, share with you a photo or two ever so briefly. And this is just going to be fun. You know, for me, I really love it. It's kind of a hobby of mine. Uh, maybe a semi application. Let's go into the Zoom share tool. There it is. Share. Pick this picture and hit it. All right. So this is the interface. Again, I can use all these buttons here manually with mouse and keyboard, mouse or keyboard. Uh, this was, I had just uploaded a bunch of songs into the program and then I had them get analyzed. There was just, there wasn't many in there, 400, 500 songs in there. And so they're all highlighted here. That's why they're all in blue. And you can see, I did a screen cap uh, right after, oh yeah, right after the fourth song, uh, it's calculating beats per minute here and what key the music in and some other information. So there's a management menu up here for it and there's a management menu over here for it. Now, let me take you to the next page, I hope. All right, so this is it in action. Again, I could do this with or without a controller. So here's a song loaded up on the first deck and neither of them are playing yet. You got all this silence up front and here's a little space of silence and then the music starts there. Here's the song all lined up on the second deck, little chicken dance from the Emeralds. And it starts out a little quieter and gets busier and busier. Thank you, polka fans. So that's what we're going to do next week. Again, I don't know, it's going to be one show or two shows. I'll do a dry run on it one evening and see if I can do it all under an hour. I don't think so, because I keep adding more and more stuff. Uh, as the, the dead week went by, oh, I want to talk about this, and oh, I want to talk about that. In fact, let me tell you, this part of the game, I contacted the lead developer. It's free and open source software. It's available for Windows. It's available for Mac. It's available for Linux. And I have invited him to be on the show and talk about it, either uh, if we do it as one show, he joins me on the one show, or if we do it as two shows, I'll bring him on for one of the two. Haven't got a response back yet, but I'm very excited about that possibility. Very interesting character from what I've read about him. Uh, I also have a, a similar guest in the process. He's already agreed to do the show. We're just working out the time and date, and it's tough to do over this holiday couple of weeks, but we'll get there. So we're going to do Mix. It's going to be fun. So upcoming episodes, Mix in the next 
uh, certainly next week, possibly the following week. Then we got POE for certainly two weeks. Uh, tie that up with uh, astrophotography because I'm going to use it outdoors using power. Uh, use pi Raspberry Pi as a Bluetooth speaker using pipe wire. We got Magic Mirror coming up. Man, that's going to be fun. And, and add an encryption certificate to an Apache web server on Pi. Might do that on another web server too. It's, it's so quick and it's so easy. All right, let me look at the last questions and then we will shut this thing down. Cole, of course, we've got uh, Steve Nicholson coming up on Mike's show on, let's see, Wednesday the 7th. So not this coming Monday, but the following two days later. I don't know, whatever the heck that is. I need a calendar in front of me to do that. Should I look at my calendar? Why not? Oh, well, better yet, Doug Jones is going to be here next Wednesday, November 30th. So in you know five days from now. And he's the one who uh, works as an engineer for uh, the Ethernet network and wireless networks on the space station, the International Space Station. Then Steve Nicholson turns up one week later on December 7th. So good stuff there. Bring that over there, we'll do that. Okay, good. All right, last questions here before we scamper. I can't pronounce that. I never know if your J's are pronounced as J's or H's. So, Vogel Justins or Vogel Testins. Winamp, yeah, Winamp, is, Winamp came back about two years ago. Uh, resurrected from the grave. So yeah, it's not dead, or it's not dead anymore. <laughs> You're a real blue lantern. <laughs> Winamp is still around. Didn't expect that one. You bet POE is much better than EOP. Mm, shame on you. And less shocking than ESD, but it did kill my cable tester. Well, hopefully what I have to share with you about that then will... Uh, help you prevent killing others. All right, we're going to wind it up then. I will see you again. Uh, work in the back channel on Monday's uh, Mike's regular show. Nothing special on that show. But again, two days later, we got Doug Jones, and that's uh, so excited. He, Doug is a, an old co-worker and a friend, and what a wonderful, wonderful guy. <clears throat> well, as ever and always, my gratitude to Mike Myers and everybody at Total and NCG who so generously provide us with resources and time for us to get together here every week. My most heartfelt thanks, as ever, goes to you and everyone who comes here to participate. This has been Dave Rush. I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars and resident high specialist. I wish you a great rest of the holiday weekend here in the States. Great weekend for everybody else. Please take care of each other. Take serious steps to stay healthy. And if at all possible, call or visit your parents. Most importantly, never forget, technology is great, but the greatest resource we have are you and I. And with that, good night. See you. I'll pop over to Discord in a little while and uh, see you at the AMAs next week. Until then, I am out of here. Later. <clears throat>